Glarotinia white mold, it's a disease that can ravage crops, sunflowers included, but we wanted to focus today, Darren, on soybeans. What are we gonna do to stop this thing, stop this white mold before it destroys our soybean fields? Well, anytime I think about a disease, the first thing that I look at, whether I'm in corn, soybeans, whatever crop is, can I find resistance? Is there a resistant variety out there that I can just plant that and I don't have to worry about things? And you know what? There's no genetic resistance to white mold. Now there are some varieties that are gonna be a little bit more tolerant than others, and certainly you should choose those varieties if you have a history of having some white mold issues and, you, and you're set on planting soybeans back in that field. But outside of that, we've gotta do fungicide applications, we've gotta have great timing, and we gotta pick the right products. Okay, so just so you understand this disease a little bit, it isn't going to set in until later on in the season, and you're going to need wetter conditions. Basically, when this disease is gonna pop up is there will be mushrooms that will emerge from the ground, they will shoot spores out, those spores will land on your plants, and then the disease infection can occur. This isn't going to happen in soybeans until those beans have started to flower. So real early in the year, you don't need to worry about sclerotinia white mold, other than if you've got a field that has a history of white mold, you could use a product called Contans that would literally kill the sclerotia, the little dormant pieces, and that's not a bad step to take well, real no, early. Well, no, but you really have to do contans in the fall to be the most effective. Like, for example, in South Dakota where we farm, if we do contans in the fall, then we've got time to get that moisture to get it spread out in the ground, to maybe even get it working if we've got a nice warm fall. But certainly in the spring, it's gonna be working out there early in the season before we've even got the beans planted. Now, if you wait until, oh, okay, I'm gonna plant beans tomorrow, I'm gonna put the contans on today, and then like this year, it gets kind of dry right around planting time, and you don't necessarily get much moisture early on in the season, pretty soon you're into mid-June, and that contans has really hardly gotten a start. And you need it to be very effective way early in the season, because once we get towards the 4th of July, that's when we really need that stuff working and to have wiped out a lot of that white mold out there. And if you haven't done that, you're just not gonna be happy. Okay, so again, your first couple steps are plant the right variety, even though there might not be resistance, you gotta plant the right variety, and then beyond that, use contans. Now, the next step is a little controversial, Darren, but I wanna drop some leaves off the plants. Okay, <laughs> I wanna go out with Cobra herbicide, and I know this might seem a little crazy because you say, oh no, that Cobra's gonna burn the beans. Yeah, it is gonna bronze the beans up a little bit. You're gonna thin that leaf canopy out a little bit. Now, Valent, of course, claims that there are fungicidal properties with Cobra. Whether you believe that or not, the fact of the matter is after you spray Cobra, the incidence of white mold is a lot less. What I think is happening is just we've thinned the leaf canopy out, we get more air movement through there, and we're talking about mushrooms, for example. The more air movement you can get through, the drier you can make it, the more sunlight that hits the ground, the fewer mushrooms you're gonna have, the fewer spores you're gonna have, the less white mold incidents you're going to have. Well, and that cobra may not be a bad option too if you're looking at weeds like our weed of the week. It sure. could be a good help on that. So when we think about, you know, hey, there may be some Roundup resistant weeds out there, you know, the cobra could help you in your weed control program and it could help with the white mold. Now, the reason why we're talking about this today is in a lot of areas of the country right now, we are at R1. We are at first flower in soybeans. That's the time you want to make your first application of fungicide. So hopefully you've already sprayed your cobra a week or so ago. Now you want to go in and hit it with something like Domark that has good activity on white mold. And if you're very concerned about white mold, we don't want you using a half rate or anything like that. Use the full rate. It only costs about 10 bucks an acre. It's less than a bushel of soybeans. So get that done right now. Then you can follow up in two to three weeks at let's say R3 or first pod with another fungicide application. So we've got basically five steps that it comes down to here. Pick the right variety, use contans, use cobra, use two shots of fungicide. You do that and you're gonna have a lot less white mold problem. Okay, now there are other things that you can do too in your whole crop rotation system. Certainly you can go away from soybeans and sunflowers and susceptible crops for a while. You plant a grass crop, you plant wheat, or you plant corn or something else. That can help you by spreading that window out a little bit. The other thing that can help you is tillage. When you've got those sclerotia across the top of the soil, if you can bury them deep, that can certainly reduce the amount of white mold that you may face that very next year. Some of those things you can do that you say, hey, you know what, I want to go two years of corn and then one year of soybeans, for example. Yeah, that can help rather than being soybeans every year or corn and soybeans every other year. Uh, that would be a rotation that'd work or a corn, wheat, soybeans rotation. That could certainly help you. And if you're already doing some tillage, using that in those particular fields where you have white mold, 
it may not cost you any extra money either. Okay, and where you're more likely to see white mold is where you've had a history of that disease in the past, when you have wetter conditions, so even just very humid days, that is a condition conducive for white mold. And then the other big thing is, if you've got a soybean field that looks just fantastic, it's growing just crazy. So let's say you put some manure out there last year or the year before, and those beans look great. They're gonna be 80 bushel beans. Well, guess what? That's most likely where you're gonna get white mold because if you've got a good early canopy that holds moisture, that traps moisture down in that canopy, then you're just ripe for white mold. And from a soil type standpoint, if you have heavier soil, it's gonna hold a little bit more moisture. You're a little more susceptible to having white mold issues as well. Well, once again, white mold is a bad disease for many different crops. We focused on soybeans today, but really the management techniques are not a whole lot different for sunflowers or other crops. The big thing is you want to get out in front of this thing. If you wait and see white mold in your crop and then decide it's time to do something about it, you've already given up a whole bunch of yield. So be ahead of the game, be aggressive in your control and your treatment of white mold, and it shouldn't be a major problem on your farm. Well, disease issues are certainly important in soybeans, but so are weed control issues. If you have our weed of the week, you'll have to get this one under control or it can take over your field. Can you identify this week's weed? 